many grams of fiber does it need? Okay. If you've got a bowl of cereal, okay, now this is where you get tricky, okay, because some of us think a bowl of cereal is just the size, of, the serving size is the size of the bowl in the cabinet. That's not the case, okay? Most of them are, you know, depending on the kind, a half a cup, three fourths of a cup, to maybe a cup and a fourth or a cup and a half, okay? If you've got a bowl of cereal that in you know, one cup, well, actually here, one cup. all right, three-fourths cup, top on the back, three-fourths cup, 110 calories, it's got 1.2 grams of fiber. Does that pass? <coughs> no. Okay? That does not pass. You need at least three grams of fiber for that to pass. Okay? That's part of my reason. Cheerios. Um, so that's just a little tidbit. So I always encourage people, get your Sharpie. This only pertains to the carbohydrates. So don't go fiber test your proteins. Don't go fiber test your fats, okay, because it does not apply. Take a Sharpie, go to the cabinet, and put an X on the box of the items or the bag that don't pass the test. Doesn't mean you can't finish it. I'm not asking you to go throw away everything in your cabinet or one or two things. But I would challenge you to find an alternative <clears throat> to that particular food item because there will be one. Okay? So fiber test your cabinet, X the box, and you put a smiley face, check marks, hearts, and whatever else all over, stars on the ones that do pass if you want to. But that would be a good exercise in awareness, okay? Because the key to success in anything that we do is a, is a, is a sense of awareness. We have to know what we're doing before we can make an educated decision, okay? If you know what you're doing, you're able to make an educated decision, then you yourself are responsible for the outcome, okay? So whether that decision, and it's an educated one, okay? So whether it is a decision to make a better choice or not such a good choice, it's still your decision, and that outcome is still yours, okay? So any positives, successes, and whatnot, I mean, they're yours, all right? So awareness, educated decision, your responsibility, if you're consistent with that, you will have success, okay? There's no way you can't. The key is consistency and awareness. Balance, moderation. Again, those come with consistency and awareness, okay? All right, so let's look to the middle. All right, the middle and the middle. All right, that's the first one we're going to look at. I find it fascinating. One piece, 200 calories. We've got 13 grams of fat, 10 grams of carbohydrate, and 9 grams of protein. What is it? It's a fat. Okay. Okay, hold on a minute. We're going to go there. Now that's okay. It's great. I'm glad you're looking at that. Because that's what I want you to do. I want you to be, it's like being an investigator. You know, you got to get down to the nitty gritty. It's the one just next to it, okay? So to the right of that, four ounces, 140 calories. Okay, here we've got four grams of fat, no carbohydrate, 25 grams of protein. So that's a protein, right? Okay, so sit your pages side by side. If you go down and you see the McDonald's, French fries. Look to the left of that, okay? So what you're looking at is a Tyson chicken patty. That was the first one. It's bread. Okay, that's where the carbohydrate comes from. But it's a fat. It's not <coughs> even a protein. How many of these patties do you need to meet your 25, as an example, your 25 grams? Two and a half. Okay, two and a half patties. Okay, which is going to be 500 calories, all right, and a whole lot of fat. The one next to it is just a chicken breast, okay? You only need four ounces to meet your protein needs. You've got a low fat, it's low fat. This is what I'm talking about when I'm, you know, awareness, okay? 
So putting protein on your plate, okay, making sure that you hit that 25 grams, there's a big difference between a breaded patty and a non-breaded patty, okay? That is what I'm talking about with awareness, <coughs> being conscious about it, and making a decision, okay? Does that make sense? Is that a little bit shocking to you? I mean, because I think sometimes we think, okay, you know, I'm getting my protein or, you know, I'm trying to cut back on my carbs, but yet I'm, I'm really loading up. You know, you could take two different types of beef, two different cuts of beef, and have a similar situation. Not so much the carbs, but definitely the fat and the calories. Okay, so it's, it's gaining a sense of awareness. I'm not asking you to go out and start evaluating a bunch of foods that you don't eat. I'm asking you to start at home. I'm asking you to take an internal look at yourself. Because we cannot abandon everything that we do and think that making a trillion new things happen in our life is going to make it be able to stick. You've got to see what do you do right now. Okay, what carbs do you eat? What protein sources do you incorporate? And what kind of fats do you eat? Start there. If you change one or two little things within that, you will make tremendous strides long term. Okay? You don't have to wipe off everything that you do and start totally clean. Does that make sense? Has anybody ever tried to wipe it all clean and start from a bunch of foods you don't even eat? How did that work? It probably didn't last. And if you haven't done it, that was a good choice. Okay? You've got to start with an internal look. Sometimes that's the scariest place to start. Okay? Because we don't like to look critically at ourselves. Okay, but don't look, don't think of this as a critical look. Think of this as a, a loving look at what you're currently doing and what little bitty steps and changes that you can take. Okay? Balance. That's all we're looking at. Alright? So go ahead and flip over that page with the, the little pictures on it. This is what your plate should look like. Okay? <laughs> breakfast. And breakfast is typically the hardest meal of the day to get an adequate source of protein. Okay? Because it's either a bowl of cereal or oatmeal or run through a fast food something. Um, but I encourage you to, if you don't want to start with breakfast, don't. Start with another meal. You don't Because you don't have to look at every single meal. Initially, pick one thing to focus on. Okay? But the biggest, or I guess the easiest way to initiate this whole process is to just make a list of the foods that you currently eat. So you have a sheet of paper, okay? You have one column for protein. You have one column for carbohydrate, okay? And within those carbohydrates, you can break that down into fruits and vegetables, okay? And starchy vegetables. Starchy, starchy vegetables are the same as a bread in terms of how they fit on the plate. And then what kind of fats do you typically eat? Okay? Once you know that, you then know what you can put on your plate or how you, you can begin to make some modifications. Okay? So if you feel like you want to focus on breakfast first, we did this in my house. I just put a thing in the kitchen. Okay? And I had one for my daughter had one for my son and I had one for myself and I said I don't want you to necessarily sit down and think you've got to fill this thing out all at one time with the foods that you like but I want you you know as you come through the kitchen jot down one or two foods that you want or that you enjoy eating I'm talking the good the bad the ugly if you like chocolate cake put it on your sheet okay because all that can work into how you plan and But in terms of your protein, make a list of those proteins, and then you can pull the, each meal out. Say, okay, for breakfast, I typically like bacon, sausage, Canadian bacon, um, eggs. You know, start as, you know, then once you've got your list, you can then begin to tie those different foods to meals, okay? Once you've got that done for each food group, then plugging them into this, or for your lunch and dinner it becomes very easy, okay? It's, if I sat down and said, okay, 
what what are you going to eat for the next five days for dinner? Good question. Then I might say, okay, well, what, what foods do you like to eat? But then pulling that out and putting it into something usable is sometimes difficult. Because, I mean, I can rattle off a few things I like to eat, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be able to sit down in one moment and plan a bunch of meals, okay? So when you've got your list of the different food groups, which is the whole point of being able to identify what your food is, okay? Once you <coughs> identify that and create your own list of foods, start at your pantry if you want to. So I've got some Cheerios right here. I'll put that down under carbs, and I've got wheat thins. I'm going to put that under carbs. I've got um, some potato soup over here. That's mostly carbs. I'm going to put that under carbs. I mean, check the food label too. Okay, so you start creating your list. Then you start plugging it in. Okay, but what do you build your meal around? Protein. Protein. Okay, if you do not cover the basics, you don't get adequate carbs, you don't get adequate protein, you don't get adequate fat, you're going to overdo it in one area. If you're too heavy in one area, that's called lack of balance, you're off balance, okay, we're not balanced, which means your body is not going to be balanced. One or two meals, a couple meals here and there, not a big deal. But if that's a consistent pattern that you have, your body is not operating to its fullest potential, and you may not realize it. Does everybody have energy all the time? Okay, I've got a shaking head no here. Who in here is so full of energy all the time that you just can't stand it? <laughs> not one person. I promise you that the way that you feel, and I'm not saying y'all all feel that, okay? <coughs> feeling cruddy and feeling tired and feeling exhausted and feeling, ugh, is not normal, okay? Period. It is not normal. You don't have to feel that way. And the first step in moving toward a less the uh, feeling is creating balance on your plate. As I said in the very beginning, those nutrients, carbohydrate, protein, and fat, all have individual purpose, meaning, and need to be incorporated into your foods or into your, your meal planning, okay? And when you do that, I promise you, if anybody's ever experienced this, you could please raise your hand and say it because pe some people don't believe me. If you will begin incorporating things that are less processed, your taste buds will change. You will taste foods completely different than you ever have before, okay? Foods that you used to love and think that you could never give up and do without will no longer be foods that you feel like you could do without. You will do without. You just don't want them, okay? Because when you eat them, you don't feel good. Has anybody ever, like after you eat greasy french fries or you, know, you look in the little container that they come in, it's just greasy, nasty. You get a film in your mouth. Okay, think beyond just your mouth, okay? You chew that up, masticate, and you chew that up, you swallow it. It's the stomach. Okay, and that is not where it stops, okay? That has got to be broken down and absorbed into your body. What do you think that is doing inside your body, okay? Think of food beyond just the, the sight, the smell, okay? You need to think of food a, it's got purpose. And again, it doesn't mean you can't incorporate some greasy french fries on occasion. Okay? It just means that when you do, you'll realize why you don't so often anymore because they're not going to taste as good. And that mouth feel that you get will be enough to kind of turn you off until the next time you're like, man, I used to love french fries. I think I'm going to have some. And then you eat them again and you're like, oh. <laughs> Now I know why I'm really not eating them anymore, okay? Things will begin to taste differently, but you've got to think about food just beyond what you see. It's doing something in your body, okay? It can protect you from cancer. It can also help contribute to cancer, okay? 
there not only cancer, but diabetes, heart disease, all kinds of irritable bowel. I mean, and that's probably one of the easiest ones to identify with because you know if you're somebody who can't tolerate certain foods, you know without a doubt that right after you eat it, you're going to have a physical problem. Okay, well, think of all the times that you eat things. And I'm just going to use fast food as an example because it, it's, it's not good for you. When you eat things, knowing that they're not healthy, but then there are lots of things that are presumed healthy but really aren't. Okay? I'm going to give you that one because there's room to learn all those. But eating things that you know are not healthy, I mean, you may not have an instantaneous effect from that food, but believe me, compounded over time, you will have an effect from those foods, okay? Different than having something that you know will instantaneously get you a <coughs> Foods, whether it's highly, um, high in saturated fats, high in trans fatty acids, highly processed and enriched, those things are very inflammatory to the body, okay? Inflammation, if you've ever exercised or twisted your ankle and you know, exercised to the point where you've injured yourself or twisted an ankle or broken your ankle, hurt yourself, you have inflammation, right? You feel it. It's not comfortable. Well, we have inflammation caused by foods that we eat that we don't feel necessarily, okay? And that chronic inflammation causes and can lead to is very proven in this. Cancer, um, uh, diabetes, heart disease, um, all kinds of different things. And it leads back to what I mentioned a few minutes ago, the um, processed foods leading to our bodies having the, the intolerances and some of the allergies and the irritable bowel stuff. That's all inflammation. That is all that is. And oftentimes can be corrected. And I'm not saying go gluten-free. You only need to go gluten-free if you have an identified gluten issue. Okay, that is not the way to... Those foods typically are very processed, gluten-free foods. Um, because gluten is the issue, okay? But then you can also have issues around those with some of the processed aspect of those. Okay, so let me ask you this. Looking at these little diagrams here, <laughs> do you currently feel like your breakfast is balanced and your lunch or dinners are balanced? I see some notes. <clears throat> what do you think you could change? All of it. Okay. So here, okay, if, if more than a couple of you are feeling that way, don't get overwhelmed by it, okay? I'm not knocking what you're currently doing. All I'm suggesting, asking, or presenting is that you be open to making one minor modification to something that you're doing, okay? And if that is just focusing more on building your meal around protein, then do that. If that is just, at this point, fiber testing your carbs, then do that. If it just means that you're going to be more aware of the foods that you're currently putting in your body, then do that. Okay? You don't have to do it all. I kind of, um, nutrition is something that, that can't be learned in an hour. It can't be learned, really, it, it, it's, it's an evolving science, okay? And I explain it to the folks that I work with, like learning how to read, learning the alphabet. Before you can write a story, write a sentence, read a book, you have to, number one, be able to identify the letters, okay? What does an A look like, a B, C, D? What do the letters look like? What do they sound like? Once you know that, you can then begin to form a word, okay? And then you've got the word. Now you can begin to put some words together and form little small baby sentences. Okay, those sentences as you progress, first, second, third, fourth grade, okay, we're on years at this point to be able to do this. You can then create small paragraphs. You begin adding punctuation. Well, by the time you graduate high school, go to college, go to grad school, you're now able to write stories, novels, thesis, you know, whatever. The point I'm making is it's a progression. You don't think that you have to know everything all in one moment, okay? You take baby steps. 
<coughs> what interests you first? What do you feel like evaluating and making a change with? And then start there. Hang out there for a while, get comfortable with it. Then see what you can add to that, okay? It's just a building process, okay? Questions? I have no idea what time it is. I could have gone over, I could be. It's right on time. Wow, okay. Any questions? Back to the carbs. Yep. And it says it's carbs, but no fiber and no sugar. Yep. What do you do with that? Like the, the one at the very top? Yeah, like the one at the top. The Cheerios. Yeah. I would find, if, if I was at the grocery store, because that's where, you know, you want to like, like, well, like the, the chicken patty that we can call this season. Right. What do you mean? Like, but like the chicken patty has 10 carbs, no fiber, no sugar. Right. I, I wouldn't eat chicken patty. Well, yeah, that's garbage anyway, but like. Yeah, well, it's all garbage, so if you're going to choose garbage, that's fine. You know what I mean? You, you can't really make garbage smell good. What's the middle thing on the bottom? Those are juices. So the one the, the one in the middle is a sugar free juice. It's the vitamin it's water zero. Water. Okay. And then the one next to it is that fuse. Okay, and the point there is just that you've got 45 grams of sugar in that one bottle of fuse. Okay? Um, just because it's on here doesn't mean I'm advocating for it. I don't drink a lick of anything that has calories in it. Sure as heck, not gonna have sugar in it. Um, I will use, and I'm not saying don't use milk, because okay, like, okay, that you don't, that doesn't need to be a predominant drink. You need two eight ounce glasses, maybe three. Well, that's a dairy period. So that includes yogurt, milk, cheese, all that stuff. Two to three servings of dairy is all you need, okay? In one serving, if it's a glass, But this is just to represent or illustrate some examples. Um, I don't, I can't tolerate lactose, so I will use sugar-free for the unsweetened um, almond coconut milk, and I'll use that on cereal. Does that answer your question? Um, well, can I know more like um, trying to like the top left. It's just the starch, it's just, it's... Okay. No, it's nothing that you have to worry about. No. I mean, it's, carbohydrates are, they come in, there's different kinds. There's short chains, long chains, so you don't have to worry about it. It's just the different starches that are included in there. Yeah. But that's a great question. Very good question. Any other questions? I've been trying to add like chia seeds to what I eat. Chia is wonderful. Yeah, like, but okay, I the Greek yogurt. I tried it once. I didn't like it, but I've been forcing myself to eat it because Allison says it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying the plain one is better to get the one with the fruit, and we could just add fruit to it, right? Yes, yes, whatever fruit you like. And again, I get this question a lot too, um, or I get this statement: fruit is too expensive, and it goes bad at my house. I'm right there with you. I don't buy fresh fruit except for apples that I know my kids are going to eat. Okay, and I can just get the little ones. Um, and then I buy frozen fruit. So whether it's strawberries, and just an FYI, if you're thinking of fruit, because fruit does have carbohydrate and not all fruits are created equally. Okay, just like vegetables, not all veggies are created equally. You've got starchy vegetables and non-starchy vegetables. You, you have a similar situation with fruit, okay? Some fruit has a lot more starch and carbohydrate in it, and I would not do dried fruit because it's got a ton of added sugar. And when you suck the water out, all you've got there is a smaller fruit <coughs> serving size and a lot of sugar. It's naturally occurring, and once it's been added, it's been added to it. But anyway, if you think about fruit, berries um, are, are the best choice, okay? They are higher in fiber, and they are lower in carbohydrate, okay? And just by the nature of them, they're also lower in calories. So those go well in um, yogurts. But you can do peaches, you can do any kind of fruit. But just keep in mind, they're not, fruit is not something like a non-starchy vegetable that you can just eat copious amounts of, large amounts of. 
okay? Because they are, an apple has about 21 grams of naturally occurring sugar. So that just gives you an example of how much sugar is actually in some fruit, okay? But when you can't have apples, and that 21 grams doesn't add into the, the numbers I gave you earlier, because that's, na that's um, added sugars, okay? The American Heart Association, their recommendations. But you still, fruit, two to three servings a day for female, three to four for men. That is all you need.